Hi, I'm Jono, and if you're new here, I do pencil drawings. So I'm in my home studio. I felt like I've done some of my favorite drawings in this space, and I wanted to come back here and um, just work from home a little bit. So it's been a long time since I've done a tools recap. So in this video, I wanna go over some of the tools that I, that I use. Some of my old faithfuls have been with me from the very beginning. Others are new and improved versions of things that I've used before. I find these videos quite helpful in seeing a bit of an overview on where my practice is at, confirmation on what still works, as well as in some cases having learned better methods. Tools play quite a big role in this, so I, I hope this video is helpful. Also, a huge thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. A bit more about them later. So the first tool is paper. Paper's a constant. I've been using Archer's Aquarelle for the last 10 years, so this one's a no-brainer. Next thing is Masonite board or MDF. Uh, these are just the boards that I use to mount my paper to, to stretch it, and it also just makes it really easy for me to carry my, my works around and store them. Water, sponge, tape, and paper towels. These are all just tools that I use when preparing my paper. So when I'm getting my paper flat on this board, these are the things that help me get that right. Also, can't forget the clips. The clips are super important. This is what helps me get the paper to stay in place when, the, when it's not listening to the water. So also super important just for like everything. I'm always using clips. Next thing is a straight edge and a blade. So a straight edge is just like a super long ruler that they use on construction sites. Super useful. I use it all the time just for getting like reference lines or anything. And then of course a blade. These believe it or not, are good for cutting. Okay, so this is a, a new addition to the tools. Someone saw my video about sharpening pencils and they recommended in the comments that I try this Swordfish sharpener out. And I'm pretty grateful that they did. It's a really fantastic sharpener. And then there's a blade that I use for sharpening pencils. This blade is was actually sent to me as a gift for one of the videos that I was doing with the brand. And um, it's like a, yeah, just a design blade for sharpening pencils. Surprise, surprise, we have some pencils here. Pencils play a big role in the drawing. And then we have the graphite sticks. But yeah, pencils are great for drawing. Blending stumps are great. They're really good for the more like detailed blending things. Just really great for moving graphite around. Don't be shy to whip out a new one. I get really precious about these and I end up just trying to use the same old one for a long time. Next tool are these stencils that I cut out for myself. This S curve shape has been really, really useful for me for outlining my stuff when I'm working with cotton wool and graphite powder and wanna get a hard line. So this has followed me for the last couple of years. Graphite powder and then also this uh, mesh sandpaper. So this I learned is called drywall sandpaper. And what's great about it is it has loads of holes in it. So the holes let the graphite fall through. I like to grind down 9B graphite sticks. I find that it usually gives me a darker finish than the graphite powder you can buy at a shop. Next thing is cotton wool. You can buy this at a pharmacy or a chemist. This is just really useful for blending graphite. Cotton wool has been a staple for me for the last couple of years. It's a fantastic tool. Linseed oil and solvents. Please be careful with this. I have always just told people to be careful and if you're looking to get a really dark background, you can get those finishes with linseed oil and with solvents, but you can so easily ruin your artwork. So please play around with it before. And then also if you're using a solvent, just do the research, check out how toxic it is so you know that you need to have like a lot of air moving around in your room or whatever. If you're gonna be working with this, I like, I've poisoned myself with it before. It's not a fun time. Um, but really powerful tool for creating some incredible artwork if you're willing to experiment and learn. And then we have makeup sponges, my new love. They move graphite around in a great way. They give me a texture that I haven't really been able to get with any other tool. And so they've found themselves a permanent spot in my, in my toolbox. These little guys are cool. They're like the blending stump of the makeup brushes. They're for doing a little bit more detailed blending. They're super powerful. They can move graphite and hold graphite like nothing else. I've run into some problems with these tools and I, I'm still trying to learn how to use them efficiently. Next tool we have is mechanical erasers. I've been using these more and more. What's great is I can erase from quite a dark layer. If my graphite has been applied already and I know that I want to get some hairs and highlights out of it, I can use one of these guys and get that highlight back. Tomo Mono Zero is a really good for fine erasing lines, also really helpful. And then my favorite, kneadable erasers. These things have just been here from the beginning. I love playing with kneadable erasers when I'm feeling stressed while I'm drawing. It's a comfort thing, but also it turns out to be a really great tool for getting some super interesting textures. Next tool, air compressor. This has been a cool new addition to my toolbox. Um, this has been a fantastic way to just keep my drawing clean 
to erase in quite a unique way, which is a very soft erase, um, erasing thing. I can get some nice blends. Um, speaking of keeping the paper clean, the next tool we have is tissue paper. This has also been with me since the beginning. If you're just trying to keep your work professional, you need to keep it clean. Tissue paper is the best way to do that. And then we have fixative. This I usually just use at the end of my drawings. And when I ship it to collectors, I know that the fixative has a lot of protective properties in it. So the work will last longer for it. A lot of my practice has also moved over to recording things. So camera, lights, microphone. So here are the tools that I use to shoot my YouTube videos. For sound, we have the Rode NTG3 and a receiver for that. This mic is overkill, but it's really saved me so many times. We also have these small Rode wireless goes, and I've attached some lavalier mics onto those as well. The main shooter that I'm working with is my Canon R6, which is a fantastic camera. It's just got really good low lights. I use it for shooting my reference images and use it for shooting these videos as well. So really, really great camera. And then obviously a tripod with that as well. I have too many tripods in my studio. Pam is getting upset with me about them. So for video lights or continuous lights, I use the Godox FL100 and 150. These are just solid, affordable LED continuous lights. And I've been using these for the last like year and a half. Photoshoot lighting, I'm using Elenchrom BRX 500s. Uh, these are old secondhand lights that I grabbed. They just work horses. Um, they put output a lot of light, but eventually I want to upgrade the system. Um, but for now, these are going strong. Often if I'm doing a little bit of an interesting reference shoot, I have to move my light around with, with my one hand, and then I'll use a speed light with a transmitter and receiver. Um, and this is just helpful for more dynamic shooting. So things that involve like lighting up eyes in an interesting way, or shooting something through, through water and I need to light it um, from one side or an awkward angle. This is a nice little guy for getting those interesting light fills. Then we have the Ronin, which when we got this thing, it was like a dramatic upgrade to the footage we were shooting. Suddenly we had this like super polished, smooth footage. So this thing has been great. Uh, I really enjoyed playing with it. Gina has been getting a lot of muscle from, from using this. They're not that light. So yeah, Ronin just for some really smooth dynamic shots. And then my home desk. So this is a desk that a friend of mine full built and it just has everything I need, super simple. And the last tool, and also this video sponsor, is my website. As a creative or, or an artist just starting out, it's so important to have an online portfolio to show your work and to make it easy for clients to find you and get in touch with you. And for me, I just felt that Squarespace did that effortlessly. I never had to patch or upgrade anything. I could register a domain with them or set up an online store. And most importantly, I could design a portfolio and show my work the way that I wanted to. Also, every time I got stuck, their amazing support team helped me out instantly. So if you're looking at building a website, give Squarespace a try. And if you decide that you love them, use this offer code and get 10% off your first purchase. So there we go. Those are the tools that I'm using this year. It's always nice to, to check in and see how the tools change year after year. There are a lot of old ones and there are some exciting new ones. Let me know in the comments if you've got any tools that you use that I haven't listed in this video that have changed your practice. I've learned so much from the comment section. I'm sure other people are learning from it too. So if you found this video entertaining or helpful, leave a like, it helps the channel out in a huge way. As always, thanks for the support and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.